Hey guys, so this is our final lecture for unit one of the IB chemistry syllabus, quantitative chemistry, all right? So after we've talked about the idea of applying mole calculations to water crystallization, empirical formula, excess limiting reagents, we now come to the final part, talking about the gas laws, all right? So I'm going to be, so uh, just a quick note, I'm going to be teaching this, uh, this course based on the assumption that you've already taken IGCSE physics because uh, unfortunately, because most, because the majority of you would probably would have taken IGCSE physics by now, but if you haven't, then uh, then uh, I'm ju I'm just going to try and make it as a simple. I'm just going to try and make it as simplified as possible for you guys. Okay. So if you remember from IGCSE physics, you probably would have seen these equations before. Okay. So pressure of a gas multiplied by its volume. Okay, of, like the volume of the container is equivalent to the pressure the the changed pressure of a gas when its volume is changed or the volume of the gas when its pressure is changed okay and this is under the assumption that there is a constant value of temperature all right a constant value of t so you might so you would know this as boyle's law okay and and you would also might recognize this one here so it's where the pressure of a gas over its temperature is equal to its is equal to its change in pressure given a change in temperature, or the other way around, assuming a constant value of the volume. And these formulae were basically deduced because of scientific experiments, but scientists weren't exactly satisfied in the way these were laid out because they were quite unorganized, like you have to use two different equations in order to determine something, so it's not really that uh, efficient. So what scientists were able to do, they saw a connection between here and they s realized that they could do this, okay? They could put both equations together into a format that looks something like this. So as you can see, they, you've inserted Boyle's Law, you substituted that into the numerator, and thus P1V1 over T1 equals to P2V2 over T2. And thus, because of this, this is equal all equal to some constant, okay? K, okay, because if both of these are equal, then that means the constant between them, ha that means there has to be a common constant, okay? Now, through further experimentation, they were able to determine the value of the constant, okay? So the value of the constant is actually equal to the number of moles of a substance multiplied by another constant, okay? Constant R. So R in this case is the gas constant, which is, actually I'm just going to write it down here. R is equal to 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin, all right? So uh, remember back in my first video when I said that I was going to be using the uh, the negative the, to the power of negative one notation. See, this is where it actually becomes handy because in the sense that if you if I were just to draw a place with dashes, like it would look uh, a bit messy, a bit disorganized. So I I would I prefer so that's why I would prefer using the negative one sign over here. So just just to make that clear. Okay. Anyway, so because of this constant that we've calculated, now we can actually come up with this equation here. PV over T is equal to NR, number of moles multiplied by R. Actually, I should put the name here. It's, it's what we call the gas constant. So this value of the gas constant can be found in the data booklet if, if you um, if, if you just look through it. Okay, it's usually, it's I think it's on the, the one, two, I think it's on the third page of the data booklet. So you should uh, find it quite easily, okay? So anyway, given this equation here, PV over T equals NR, we can then rearrange the equation into this. PV equals NRT, okay? Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking that this is, oh, this is way too physics for me. I'm, I mean, I'm a chemistry student, right? But the thing is, IV loves to use this, also use this equation to, to do some of their questions, okay? But uh, don't worry, it's not anything that's too complex. It won't test you on like the actual physics behind PV equals MRT, I need to learn uh, derivations such as how it equals to three over two times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature, or that kind of thing. Okay, I think I'm going a bit off topic, but basically, um, what you need to do in chemistry is just have a basic understanding of this of this equation and know that if you substitute, if like if you're trying to calculate N, you would substitute the pressure, the volume, the temperature to calculate it. Or if you're trying to calculate the volume, then you would substitute pressure, number of moles, and the temperature to find them find the value of V, okay? So it's basically just a matter of substituting values, depending if you can find those values in the first place, okay? So so even though this is a quite an easy concept, I still want uh, 
you to have a, a basic a solid understanding to it which is why I'm going to uh, give a few questions for you guys to do which I will have written up in the board in a bit okay so uh, as you can see here I've written up these two questions here so the, these are the questions that we're going to have to do to try and practice this one okay so uh, as you see I've only put up two questions because um, the thing about PV equals NRT. It's just that it's a really simple, uh, really simple concept in chemistry. Okay, considering that we're not actually in, considering we're not actually in physics. So uh, in a sense, there's not that many questions that could there's not that many variants of questions that can be asked. Okay, in fact, I, I think there's only just one. It's basically just uh, putting in a substitution and applying these laws over here. Okay, which you probably would have learned in IGCSE physics. So um, what so so in this that you're mainly just going to do these two questions, but what I'll do later on is I'll just uh, post a link in the description just to, um, as a link to more questions for you to practice, okay? So anyway, uh, let's get started. So, what is the volume of 0.25 moles of a gas at 72.7 kilopascals, okay, PA means pascals, at 15 degrees Celsius? So. So just a few things that uh, I want to clarify first about uh, about this equation. So one of the main things you have to remember about PV equals NRT is the units of, of PV equals NRT. So P pressures, P or pressures units, okay, is Pascal's, okay, Pascal's, PA, okay. V's units, okay, the volume's units, okay, is in meters cubed, all right? Then the number of moles, the number of moles units, uh, N is just moles, then R units, as we mentioned beforehand, joules per moles per Kelvin, all right? Now, the biggest part here is now T. The T's units is not in Celsius, it's not in Fahrenheit, okay? It's what in what we call Kelvin, or the value K, okay? So, why would, so why would we use the form of Kelvin, okay? Because, see, the the, the Celsius scale is basically scaled uh, relative to water's freezing point, okay? So, so you know how you know how when they say that water has a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius, okay? Because the Celsius scale is basically designed relative to water, but Kelvin, on the other hand, is like the Celsius scale. As Celsius increases in increments, okay? As in like one degree Celsius to two degrees Celsius to three degrees Celsius. Kelvin also increases by that same increment, that same magnitude of the increment, okay? But what's the difference here? So the main difference here is that while water's uh, freezing point may be zero degrees Celsius, but at that point, Kelvin is equivalent to another value, which is, okay, actually I'm just gonna, zero degrees Celsius is actually equivalent to 273 Kelvin. Okay, that's a way we can put it, because you might have heard of this term of uh, absolute zero. It's the lowest possible temperature. And that lowest possible temperature is actually negative 273 degrees Celsius, okay? Which is equivalent to zero Kelvin. So a fancy way we can put it is that the temperature, okay? Temperature in Celsius, okay? Notice this uh, little box here that says Celsius is equivalent to the temperature in Kelvin minus 273, okay? So this is the way you can put it, okay? The temperature in Celsius is equivalent to the temperature in Kelvin minus 273, all right? So, so that means Kelvin can, Kelvin's minimum can only be zero Kelvin, and thus the Celsius's minimum can be negative 273 Kelvin, okay? So, uh, that, so that's the way you can put it. So in this case, let's uh, just write our equation, all right? So PV equals NRT. So we're trying to look for uh, the value of V. So it's just re re rearranged equation, V equals NRT over P, and we just substitute the values in there. So uh, number of moles, 0.25 moles, multiplied by 8.314, and then here, the T, because it's in Celsius, we have to convert it to Kelvin. So if we just go multiply by 15, plus 273, okay? 15 plus 273 because we rearranged this equation to get the temperature in Kelvin, all right? And we also know the value of P, which is 72.7 kilopascals, but since our units has to be in pascals, okay? So we would go 72,700 multiplied by another thousand, okay? And if we just plug that into the calculator, our value of V would be equal to, as I've calculated here, give me a second, uh, here. 
0 0.00823 meters cube. Okay, so this would be our value of V. So, uh, so the idea is pretty straightforward. Um, depending on whether you follow these basic rules on the value uh, on the types of units you have to use. So a common mistake that uh, candidates make uh, when doing these questions is that they aren't using the correct units. Okay, it's usually it's you, they usually kind of mix up between uh, whether the value of v should be meters cubed or dm cubed, or whether um, the value of p should be in pascals or kilopascals, or definitely, uh, really carelessly, they forget to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. Okay, so or or they might just overconvert, like. For example, uh, there was a question I think in uh, in in the year I think in the M sixteen paper. It's where they had a it's basically where they stated the temperature in Kelvin, but there were quite a few students that uh, that actually converted it to Celsius and used that value to calculate PV because NRT, which was a really dumb mistake. Okay, so so just make sure it's. So just make sure if you get Celsius, you, you have to convert it to Kelvin. If there's Kelvin, you just leave it as it is, all right? Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next question. And uh, this question might actually be a little familiar for you guys because this question is actually the middle section of the empirical formula question that we've done in the last lecture, okay? It's also on menthol gas. So 0 0.150 grams of menthol gas has a volume of... 0 0.0337 dm cube. Okay, note dm cube, which means we have to convert it later, at 150 degrees Celsius and 100.2 kilopascals. Calculate the molar mass of the substance. Okay, so now, so now, obviously, it didn't say you have to calculate the moles or anything, but basically, uh, two ways we can know that we're asked to being asked to calculate the moles. So, firstly, since they've given the volume, they've given the pressure, also given the temperature. And given that we know the value of R, and thus we need to look for the value of N, okay? And the second way we need to know it is because we, we're given the mass of the substance, little m, and we also need to find the molar mass, big M, which means we may need to find the number of moles, okay? So just recalling our relationship between mass, the number of moles, and the molar mass of a substance, right? So for this part, let's just use our equation again, PV equals NRT. So this time we're looking for n. So let's just rearrange the equation very quick. So n equals p v over r t. And so let's just rewrite the equation. n equals to our pressure. So pressure is in kilopascals. We have to convert it to pascals. So 100.2 times 2, 1,000. Okay, so that's so that's in pascals. Multiplied by the volume. The volume is 0 0.0337 dm cubed. We have to convert it, convert that to meters cubed. So in order to convert from dm cubed to meter cubed, it's like cm cubed to dm cubed. We have to divide that value by a thousand. So, 0 0.0337 over 1,000. Okay, and then uh, the value of r 8.314 multiplied by the value of multiplied by t in Kelvin. So we have to convert 150 degrees Celsius to a Kelvin value. So it's going to be 150 plus 273. Okay, wait, let me just check. Yep, okay. So basically, now we need to calculate the value of the mole. So we just plug all those values in the calculator. We would get, uh, it says here, 0 0.000960 moles. Okay, so this is the value of n that we've calculated. Now, in order to calculate the molar mass, then, if you recall from our previous lectures, then you would know. Then uh, you would know how to do it. And actually, I'm just going to, uh, I'm actually just not going to explain it. I'm just going to write it out the... The value of the molar mass just straight straight ahead. So, value of the molar mass is a hundred and fifty six point two two grams per mole. Okay, so you see how we're able to take PV equals nRT and calculate uh, different variables in order to determine further determine like the molar mass in this case. Okay, so yeah, that's basically everything that we need to cover for uh, PV PV equals nRT due to its a uh, main simplicity in chemistry. And that brings us to a close to unit one of the IB chemistry syllabus. And in the next in the next lecture, we're gonna be moving on to unit two, which is based on atomic structure. And so in my opinion, unit two is a relatively more difficult uh, topic in chemistry because this topic introduces a series of new concepts that you probably wouldn't have uh, like approached or understood before. So but what I suggest is if you've got the Oxford study guide already, then I suggest you to do a little bit of pre-reading before watching these lectures. So hopefully that would help out a bit.
Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.